Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, what I have for you is a really cool DAG that I've been making a bit of use of recently for collecting data for my ML processes, which is a DAG that will extract data from a variety of web pages, do some basic normalization, make a bunch of parallel API calls, so it actually is you know, using the uh, new task groups um, to call all these different APIs, collect that data, normalize all that data, bring it into an object storage, and then load it into Snowflake so that then I can use it for my ML models. Um, this is really great. You know, a lot of times I'm scraping website documentation, but also social media, um, really, you know, any kind of topic that you're trying to collect data from online, this is going to be useful because it just allows you to take that raw information from an API, from a web page, and then do some pre-processing before making it available for your database for any downstream models. Um, and you could obviously swap out Snowflake for a data lake or any other kind of database you want to use. Um, I'm just using Snowflake here because I have access to it. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do here is open up Terminal and just create a new blank directory. Um, so cd desktop, hey guy, make directory parallel scraper, and then cd into that, and then astro dev init, create our blank airflow environment, open up the folder, so let's go into JDGuy repos, parallel scraper here, awesome. So now, have our airflow environment built using the astro CLI, so just an easy way to you know set up the airflow locally. Um, and then what I'm gonna do here, first in my requirements file, is give you all the requirements that you'll need to actually run this. Um, so here, we're gonna have the HTTP provider, Amazon provider, Snowflake, Pandas, requests, and Boot23. So HTTP, making request APIs, uh, Amazon for interacting with S3, that'll be our object storage of choice today. Um, Snowflake, obviously to interact with Snowflake. Then pandas for uh, manipulating, for creating data frames and manipulating them, doing that normalization before we bring it into Snowflake. Requests for giving us better handling of the JSON, JSON that will be generated uh, from these API, from these API calls, from web scraping, just generally good handling of API requests. Um, and then boot 23 this is effectively just kind of a cursor into allowing us to interact with Amazon services within the context of Python code, so it's the AWS SDK for Python. Now, we've got all requirements set up, so we can save this, and then we can get started actually creating our DAG. Um, so we'll call this parallelprocessor.py, and then, so then within this script, first thing we're gonna do, as we do with all of our DAGs, is do all of our fun, fun imports. So here we've got the simple HTTP operator, or you describe that as Python for writing Python code and then turning it into a task. Local file system S3 operator, that's what we're gonna be using to take Python, or take our files, the data we're scraping from our local Airflow environment into S3. Then S3 to Snowflake, pretty self-explanatory, moving that data from S3 into their Snowflake environment. The email operator, so we can send emails, receive updates around the DAG. Dummy operator, you'll see it's just kind of a useful uh, for starting and ending ta our DAGs with, uh, just you know, useful tool. Also task group for defining a task group within uh, Airflow. Then date time for time delta, better handling of date time and changes in date time. JSON, pandas, and OS, or explain JSON and pandas are for, but OS is going to be used for writing system level messages. Then, next thing we'll do is just to find some super fun default arguments for our DAG. So here, default args, owner, airflow, really not even anything interesting there, just kind of the basic stuff. Um, and then the fun stuff, which is defining our actual DAG. So here we have uh, web scrape, dynamic web scraping to Snowflake, just accepting our default args, nothing really interesting there in the DAG definition either. And we're gonna start our task with a dummy operator. And then what we're going to do is after that, uh, feed this into, sorry, I just opened that by accident, um, feed this into parallel API calls that are gonna use dynamic task mapping to generate parallel API calls. So the benefit of this approach is that you can add as many different API endpoints to this uh, list, and then this will dynamically generate tasks for each of those API endpoints. So for instance, if you're trying to get every page from a document, you can go through, you can have this kind of iterate through, hey, uh, page one to page 1,000, and then collect all those different pages uh, so that you can then use them downstream. So really useful here, and good use case for 
Airflow's dynamic task mapping because before you would have to have this be much more rigid either through task groups or dynamic task generation, um, which you would then have to like redo every time you wanted to use parallel or add a new or, or new API endpoint or remove one. Um, you'd have to regenerate the whole DAG and then you wouldn't see the previous DAG. And then also this can be parameterized. So if you want to actually have a call where you f have this be a form, you can then have a form that takes in, hey, these are the API endpoints I wanna have, or I wanna hit, and then this will iterate through all of them. Um, then here, define extract data from an API endpoint. So here you have your API endpoint, just some basic KWARGs uh, for collecting the information from a previous task instance, so that's just necessary there. Uh, but what we're really getting is for every API endpoint, we are going to uh, get some data. We're going to execute a uh, response request, load that JSON, um, and then we are as generated from our request. Um, and then we're going to return that to be available for the next task to transform it. Um, so next, what we're going to do is actually call the API. So this is just a function that we're applying to it. Um, but here, call API simple HTTP operator. Uh, dot partial. So this is how you're doing the dynamic task mapping. So here dot partial, these fields will stay the same for every single uh, API call. Um, and this applies to any time you want to use dot partial and dot expand. And then here you have the dot expand method being used to uh, expand this task. So what this will do is for every endpoint in API endpoints, this will create one task instance of that task. So this is what really is, is the magic here that's creating all those different parallel tasks. Then next, we're going to extract some data um, from those. So here we're calling that Python operator. Uh, so calling this function we just wrote, that's then going to take the response that we get from this HTTP operator, process it using just using this JSON load, um, and then return that data as a more easily consumable data set. And again, using the expand operator here, so we create parallel task instances for every parallel API request. Um, so it doesn't just go from like three to one, we keep processing everything in parallel as we actually move through the DAG. So maintaining high efficiency here. Next, we're going to define another Python task um, here where we're going to take that data and actually uh, normalize it. I'm also add an extract there. <laughs> But here, define normalized data. Again, just taking KWARGs, we can pull from that previous task instance. And what we're doing here is reading in uh, all the different data points from our previous task. Um, and then we're going to use JSON normalize that's uh, brought in with, from pandas, normalize the JSON that's returned from that request, append it to this data list, and then concatenate them all together. Then we also have a little validation here. So we're going to check that the data frame is not empty and then give us a normalized file path, temp normalized CSV. So just put this in the temporary file system in our Airflow environment, um, and then actually write it to there with using that CSV path we defined, and then return that normalized CI CSV path so we have it available in an XCOM and know where to reference it from. Then all we gotta do here is just take normalized data and turn it into a Python operator. And you'll notice here it says uh, using the dot expand and dot partial method, and that's because we're reading through every single task ID that had extract data, and that's going to go through every single one of those parallel tasks, iterate through them, pull that information out from their XCOMs, and then add it to this one single data list. Um, so here we're moving from parallel into a single task because we actually want to mold that data set together. But if you wanted to upload all those different data sets in parallel, you could still do that as well. I just wanted to kind of show you how you can go either parallel through the DAG or you can condense downwards. Um, and it really depends on your use case, which is gonna be most helpful for you. Then our next setup is going to be defining how we're gonna save this data into our object store. So here, define partition upload to object store. Here we're going to partition it by the current date time, date, month, year. So automatically generating a partition folder for this set of data we're adding in. Uh, this is just a really good way to keep organized and make sure that you're not going to overwrite previous runs. Um, if you're running it more frequently than daily, you probably want to include this to be, you know, include like an hourly in here as well. Um, but day works for my use case here, where it's just, you know, every day I want to run this to collect that new information. Um, and then here you just have the S3 key, which we're also going to dynamically generate using Jinja templating. So appending this partition, partition folder as the file path that then leads into normalized data. So what this will have the result of is I'll have folders for every day. And then within each folder, I'll have a normalized data CSV um, for that particular day. Then what we're going to do here is just pass that, is add this again to a Python operator, partition upload to S3, normalized file path, just passing that in so it knows where to actually save it. 
And then we're going to use the local file system 2S3 operator to take this from our local file system and upload it into S3. Um, so here, which you can see is actually pulling the task ID. So using this to dynamically generate the partitions, give us the S3 keys, and then using this to actually perform the upload into S3 using the partition and our AWS connection. Then next, what we're going to do is just load the data into Snowflake. So here, we have load in a Snowflake, S3 to Snowflake operator, task ID load in Snowflake, using our connection ID, again, pulling these S3 keys from this previous task, um, using whatever table, schema, stage you want to use, making sure you set the file format to CSV since that's what we're uploading it as, and now your data is in, in Snowflake. So now that your data is in Snowflake, though, we're going to clean up some temporary files to make sure we don't bloat airflow. So here, defining a function to clean up temp files, and then using a Python operator to call this. Um, so here, clean up task, and it should be like that. And then also have some notifications in here as well. So what we're going to do is add a success and failure notification with the email operators. So here, success notification, send it to your email. If this DAG ID has succeeded successfully, make, you know, just give us an email that says it has completed successfully. If it's failed, the DAG ID's failed, check the logs for more details, and you know, you'll see how we'll, so you can see our failure notifications up here. So if we go to, where is it, success, failure, um, one second. Oh, it's in the trigger roll, that's right. So here, trigger roll is all success, so if every task is succeeded in the DAG, this will fire. If a single one fails, this will fire and send you the failure notification. Um, so just useful little safekeeping there uh, to make sure that, hey, uh, you just have a notification about the state of your DAG. Obviously, if you don't want to spam yourself with emails, don't include that. It's kind of just an add-on um, if you choose. And then tying it all together, just pretty normal stuff here. So start, call API, extract data, normalize data. Then we also have normalized data, going to partition upload, uploading S3, uploading to Snowflake. Pretty linear here, um, clean up task into success notification and also clean up task into end um, because it will go send that success notification then end at the same time. And then this start to failure notification, this is parallel that will check, hey, has anything actually failed within these? So it won't trigger unless one of them fails. Um, so it's kind of like a dummy task that will be skipped unless there's a failure there. Anyways, that is all I got for you. So just want to show you how you can build this super cool parallel DAG using dynamic task mapping in Airflow, do some useful stuff, collect that data, normalize it, get it into Snowflake. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.